828 and this is another Crossbeats production. So this particular tutorial is about how to find the key of your kick and I want to show you guys how to understand how to find that first off and I also want to show you how to EQ or boost the frequencies on your particular kick. So this kick that I'm looking at is, well I've discovered that it's in the key of C. And the way that I found that it was in the key of C was using this feature here within Neutron. And this feature is basically called a peak hold function. So the peak hold function, you set that to infinite or 5000 if you don't want it to hold infinitely, which infinite means forever. Um, and you leave that as real time on that function there. So if you've got an EQ that's similar to this, I'm sure most EQ, EQs with a spectrum like a spectrometer like this will give you an opportunity to, to um, control the the amount of peak time that, that shows the, the frequencies there. So what I'm trying to explain is basically if I press this uh, and let the kick play. All right, so it's showing me that this curve here, uh, that curve is telling me that that's the peak of the frequency. So obviously that's where the most power of this kick is and the key or the crest of the frequency is right there. So if I move this across and Funnily enough, this EQ is quite good because it has a spectrometer on there and it also has a frequency on the actual note and it shows you the note that you're looking at as well. So uh, Neutron is fantastic if you're just getting into mixing as well because you can start to learn how to mix just by watching what the track assistant does. But that's another tutorial altogether. I just really want to show you how to find the key. So if I move this across at about 65, that shows me that the crest is about there. 65 is kind of the note or the key that this kick is in. And um, if I move that down to zero, so I'm not boosting at all. Let's play that one more time. Okay, so obviously it's still in the same, same key there. It's in the key of C. The way that I found out that it was in the key of C wasn't through this tuner here because the issue with this tuner within Studio One at least for using it on a uh, like a dynamic instrument like a kick it it doesn't quite pick up because of the the transient it's so fast that the tuner doesn't hear or understand what that frequency is so it kind of stumbles around and, and gives me a d and an f and all that sort of stuff it's probably good for if you're using a stringed instrument just to you know, strum the string and all that sort of stuff but on this particular thing it didn't work so just to show you that that that's not really handy in this situation. So I just want, just want to show you another way to find um, the information out without having to have a tuner or anything like that. As long as you have a an EQ that has a spectrometer like this, you can pretty much do it on your own. And it doesn't even have to have the, the note on this EQ. So this is just a benefit to me in, in that sense. So what I did was I went to this website called the seventh string. Now, I don't own this website, it's got nothing to do with me, but it's just a really fantastic uh, website to find out what key the frequency is in. So, if I look and I see the uh, second octave, or the, well, yeah, it would be the second octave of C, I can see that frequency is 65 hertz. Now, if I see 65 hertz, that's exactly what I've got here 65 hertz. And if I move that up to the crest of that, um, it's close to about 65. Yeah, it's about 65. Okay. So we've got 65, we'll just type that in, and let's just see what happens when we boost the frequency there. So I'll just play the kick and then I'll start boosting. Alright, so we've got a lot of low end right there and that low end sounds like it's in tune to me as well. So. I'm pretty sure by the sound of it that that's the correct frequency for that low end. So if you are trying to understand where to EQ your kick and how to get the most benefit out of EQing your kick, this is probably the best way if you want to do it technically with frequencies uh, to get the um, the most out of the kick that you that you can. I mean, if you want to stack kicks, that's another tutorial, and I might do that on on just stacking kicks and how to understand how to stack kicks and make them sound good together. But this, to me, is probably the best thing that you can do as far as having one kick and understanding where to EQ it. Now, if you just look at the second, sorry, the third octave there, that's 130. So say I move this to 130 and type that in. I'll just reduce this down first and I'll just keep this one at zero for now. Let's just boost the frequency of 130 and see what we get.
Okay, so a different tonal quality. Obviously, it's further up in the spectrum. But that just goes to show you that within those those frequencies, I mean, if you kept going, I'm not going to do it on this tutorial, but if you, you try it yourself at home, just go along these frequencies and see what you find. And within those frequencies, I'm sure that you're going to find the right sound on that kick. So that's one way to know how to boost EQ on a kick. Um, I'm not telling you to go in there and boost it at 15 decibels. That's not what I'm saying to do. But what I'm just trying to tell you is that you can find the tonal quality in your kick. So I'll just move this spectrum just down to 5,000 so it doesn't stay there again. Um, so you can find the quality of you know, the frequencies inside that, that particular instrument being the kick and you can start to boost those. And then when you go along with the, with the EQ, you can move the curve along and you can then see which notes aren't going to fit within that, that frequency. So that kind of gives you a good way to understand how to EQ your kick or how to EQ an instrument in general, I guess. Uh, but how to, how to get the most beneficial tonal qualities out of uh, certain instruments or kick for this example. And you know it it teaches you a little bit a little bit about the the mixing side of things as well as the musical side of things the the technical frequencies behind uh, why a C has that certain frequency. If you go learn further into it, you'll start to understand that you know the music that you're producing, especially with uh, a group together instrument track, you want to have things that are in the same tonal quality and have the have the instruments fitting within that key of the song. So just like a drummer would go and tune their drums if they're playing uh, their drums for a live set, for example, uh, you, you can also tune your kick or your drums to, to set uh, them up in the track and have them sitting right. So I hope this tutorial got, I hope it helped you guys out and I hope you start to learn from doing this and and just get your own stuff at home and you know start fiddling around with the frequencies and start to understand where uh, frequencies sit on certain things because it will help you later on down the track when you start to mix your own music and you start to learn certain things about uh, the music itself. So otherwise, I'll let you guys go and uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see on this channel. And peace.